Uh, your next act, I've never seen him before, but I hear he's on the radio with Tanya, which is cool. It's tilted, all tilted. Uh, and also, I saw a video of his on YouTube that was super funny, so I'm sure he's going to rock the house. Guys, I give it up for Ian Alexander! Yeah! Hi. Hi, I'm Ian Alexander, and I moved back here with my parents' house again. I like to start things off with the most unappealing information about myself, first and foremost. It's like, hi, and this is my cold sore. I shake hands, I was just in the bathroom. I was just in the bathroom. No, we're at Jack Doyle's. This is fucking weird. I'm surprised I haven't pulled the plug yet. It's been interesting watching this building become so many different things over the years. Who lives in Sarnia and has watched this building become so many different things over the years? It's fucking weird. It's, it's interesting. I not only get to say that I'm standing where a pool table used to be, but I get to say that I'm standing where 47 pool tables used to be. It was the pool table place, then it was the skinny lounge. Remember that fucking place? The carpet and the fluorescent lighting and the big gymnasium, the, the doorstep stage, which it so kind of has. That, I think what would have rounded off the decor is a ball pit and an arcade. That place was five ways to dudes away from being Farley's fucking fun house. <laughs> Remember that place? It's always funny watching how stores just close and then reopen with different names, like that's gonna change anything in Sarnia. Farley's fun house did that. It reopened as Aqua Pools and Spots, but it's still fucking Farley's fun house. It's still the same place. Montana's just reopened again. It's like, let's just close Montana's now and leave it dormant for nine years in a Walmart parking lot. The Walmart will move away, and we're like, ah, oh, we'll just reopen it and call it Montana's and see if anyone fucking notices. <laughs> and we still fucking go there! It's fucking ridiculous. But no, it's nice. Um, am I too loud, Marty? No, oh, you're good. Marty O'Black is that doing sound today? <laughs> I didn't have a joke lined up, I just wanted to point out that the person with the coolest speech impediment in the world is not on a microphone tonight. <laughs> Sorry. No, I have, to really, I have to point this out. Both Marty and I have ex-girlfriends working in the bar tonight. We have a round of applause. I'm fucking serious. I'm not even kidding. Not even kidding. It's so weird. It's so fucking weird. And he's got a new girlfriend. I'm with 12 dudes and my fucking parents are here. Jesus Christ. It's hard to date girls in this town. Round of applause if, like, you've dated all of them. And where do you go? It's weird. I heard round of applause earlier that there was nurses. Do you have nurses in the audience? Anyone in the nursing program wanting to become a nurse? I, I heard the cheer. You can cheer. It's fine. No. I, I went to the hospital for, like, a week. And uh, I, I'm like, I can't go to the clubs now. Because every girl in town has played with my shit. <laughs> All of them have seen my asshole and played around with my poop and I have to go, here's a present for you, and I go back to the bed now. It's fucking insane. But yeah, I'm gonna try, I'd like to be, I'd like to be the comedian tonight that does not talk about poop or masturbation. I'd like to be. I'm going to be the comedian that does not stop talking about poop and masturbation. I'm so sorry. Uh, which leads me to my next point. I, yeah, I moved back in with my parents. They're here. Uh, and it's weird living back with your parents. I mean, like, I, I lived alone, and then now I'm back. Uh, and it's weird, not because of the reasons that you think it's weird. People ask me, like, oh, do they nag you to make a few chores? No. The first thing, when I first come back, and I walk in my old bedroom and drop my bags, what goes through my head isn't, oh, I'm gonna have to get a real job now and, you know, help out with dinners. No, the first thing that I think of is, where the fuck am I gonna jerk off now? Because when I lived alone, I fucking, you jerk off everywhere. You're like, you're in the kitchen making a sandwich. You're disgusting while you're alone. Now you come back, and you have that weird moment where you re-enter your bedroom, it's like a cinematic moment like you're a pro college football player, and you're coming back to the high school track or something, and you're like, so this is where I used to play with balls. <laughs> you walk in, you drop your bags, and you see the song pretty one of like the Me Too posters and make you want to fucking kill yourself. Serial <laughs> Joe, and you're like, what the fuck ever happened to that band? And then your eyes land on this box of, this cardboard box of pornography that you always have. It's like origami folded together that you never find want to get into. And you had a cleverly labeled boring schoolwork so no one would go into it. But over the years of your mother dusting it, the label had peeled off and she relabeled it. Ian's masturbation station. Thanks, mom. <laughs> but you're there. It's like, this is where I grew up learning how to masturbate through the evolution of pornography and whatnot, stuffed animals. And then you left and you were like, alright, let's take this shit out in the road. And then you come back and you're like, where did I do it? I have the 
bedroom in the bathroom? I'm not gonna go pretend to take a shit and jerk off. I'll develop some complex where, like, I'll, I can only get hard if I'm pooping. It's like I can only come if something's passing through my asshole one way or the other. These things happen. But yeah, I am single, surprising. Uh, but yeah, do you ever notice that um, when you hit a certain age, around 25, uh, you stop being ashamed of getting caught masturbating, or when you're, you know, someone knows that you've been doing it, you're not even ashamed anymore. You just kind of like when they walk in, you're just mad that you don't get to finish properly. You're just like, oh, fuck, close the door. Come finish me off, mom. And she's here. I didn't think that she'd come. I didn't think she'd come. I didn't think she'd come. Um, so, yeah, we were roommates. Uh, I rearranged all my jokes because I just had to get the ex-girlfriends thing in there, and now it's throwing me off what I was going to say next. But relationships are hard. I got to talk about relationships on that one. I'm sorry. I got to do it. Uh, yeah, it, it's weird being single again because I'm usually in a relationship. When I break up with someone, they break up with me. I get back in a relationship really quickly. And that's weird. People hate when I hear, like, you need to be alone. You need to find who you are, but like, no, I just, I hate being alone, I like being in a relationship, but now I've been single for too long, that it's like, I'm past my prime, like, I'm just like, festering, my body's just comfortable, it's discomfort, I'm just batting my dick and balls around, you know what I mean? And it's fucking weird, and no one wants to hear the guy who's been in a lot of relationships complain about being single, they fucking hate it, but people love to hear their friends complain, not because they think they're interesting or anything, but because they want to wait till they're done talking and then give them the fucking advice that no one ever asks for. And it's never good advice either. It's always just really cliche, like, you can't love someone else until you love yourself. Oh, you, you said I loved you too soon, or you moved in too soon. Fuck you! <laughs> Say I love you too soon. Say it right out the gate. Move in with someone, fuck it up. Otherwise, what are you doing? You're just lying to the person that you're with. Who in here has said I love you way too fucking soon? Put your fucking hands up, you imagine times day bastards. Oh, you gotta do it. But seriously, the people's fucking advice is is is, is terrible. I'm getting the phone flash here. You want me to get off the stage now? Oh, like a minute. A minute, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> let me let me tell you for these bastards that uh, want to give you this terrible advice. This is how you turn all your friends into best friends. You wait until they're done bitching about whatever. You don't have to listen to what it is. Don't interrupt them. Wait till they're done and then go, yeah, yeah, dude, that's, that sucks. Uh, Want to watch compilation videos of girls in bikinis falling off shit on YouTube? Me too, high five. <laughs> Seriously, they will turn into your best friend. They will love you. And it works the same way with girls too. Just wait for them to be done talking. It'll take longer, but you wait. And then be like, oh, well, that really sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Want to do shots and make fun of how disgusting penises look? All right, there we go. All right, I'm just gonna get off. My mom's giving me the eye. I didn't even mean to say it that way. All right. My name's Ian.